Hello everyone. Uh, this is a webinar about uh, business and economic analysis for the 5G Carmen project. Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, we're going to have uh, a 45-minute uh, presentation. Uh, it is divided into three different parts. Uh, and uh, of course, you are uh, more than welcome to send us uh, your comments and your questions, and just to let you know that these questions uh, will be answered uh, after the presentation uh, is completed. So uh, we're going to have a 15-minute uh, question and answers uh, section. So uh, let me start this uh, webinar uh, by sharing uh, my screen. I hope you can see it. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is a webinar on business and economic analysis. Uh, I'm George Avdikos from uh, Eight Bells, and uh, I will make a, an introductory uh, section uh, for this uh, webinar. Uh, so, uh, a brief uh, introduction to SICAM uh, platform, and uh, which is enabled by 5G. So. Uh, uh, it is uh, very expected. It is expected that uh, vehicles will uh, interact in the near future, not only with each other, but also with road infrastructure and networks. And uh, this domain is called Cooperative Intelligent Transport System (CITS). And this uh, domain allows road users and traffic managers to share information and use it to coordinate their actions. Uh, and uh, it is expected that full development of this domain of CITS will significantly improve road safety, traffic efficiency and comfort of uh, driving and also reduce the environmental impact of transportation. Um, 5G Carment uh, is a project uh, whose effort is to uh, drive the research, implementation and demonstration of refined 5G solutions for uh, cooperative, connected, and automated mobility, SICAM platform. In such a, a high, highly dynamic and changing CITS environment, which involves uh, car manufacturers, mobile network operators, and road operators, but also it involves public authorities and uh, includes EC legislations, uh, business and economic analysis uh, offers the methodologies and the tools to estimate the relevant market size, uh, but also to estimate uh, revenues, profitability for potential investors, uh, and also to recommend policy actions to European authorities and organizations by considering different short and long term scenarios. Um, uh, and uh, in this slide, we are showing uh, the uh, approach that we followed to 5G comment project uh, regarding the business and economic analysis and we call it combined approach because it it uh, combines uh, business and economic analysis together with simulations um, so uh, there are uh, there is let's say pure technical pure uh, business analysis uh, so you will hear about uh, terms like value networks and business models and business cases uh, regarding the economic analysis part uh, we're focusing on uh, total cost of ownership. So uh, there's also uh, another element uh, in this approach. It's, it is the simulations uh, on selected scenarios which feed uh, not only the, the economic analysis, but also the SDA. SDA stands for Strategic Deployment Agenda. And actually, this is a deployment uh, agenda in Europe uh, regarding connected and automated mobility. So, um, uh, so there is, sorry, so uh, this is a combined approach and at the end of the project we are going to uh, propose a go-to-market strategy for uh, many stakeholders and in this approach uh, we are also including uh, results and data from other sources, external sources and we are also considering societal goals and impact. So at the end of the, the project we are going to um, and this is one of our final goals to, uh, to produce and, uh, and share a white paper on policy and recommendations for stakeholders. Um, we consider this approach as quite as rather innovative. So uh, here you can see a list of indicating publications and references that have been published 
so far. Um, and uh, there are five publications. Some of them are few technicals, uh, like uh, 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 one and uh, four, some others. Uh, the second one deals with uh, the measurements and how uh, measurements uh, reveal the uh, limits for 4G networks. And uh, the final one is about uh, white paper and how white paper can contribute to Europe 2013. Uh, let me introduce uh, the spe speakers. So, as I mentioned, we're going to make uh, three uh, um, separate um, presentations. Uh, uh, the first one is about simulations, and it will be done by Dr. Benoit Denis uh, from CLAT in France. Uh, Mrs. Asma Tsecha uh, is a PhD candidate at ID Lab, IMEC, and uh, she will uh, talk about business and economic analysis. And uh, Dr. David uh, Garcia Roger from UPV will uh, make a presentation on strategic deployment agenda. I would like to acknowledge uh, the 5G Cancer, Cancer uh, Consortium and especially World Package 6 partners for their contribution and discussion and uh, the hard work. So. I will give the floor now to uh, Dr. Benoit Denois to uh, proceed with the, with the presentation on simulations. Okay, thank you, George, uh, for the introduction, and I'm good morning to everyone. Um, so this very uh, first presentation, uh, indeed, is it intended to provide you uh, with, a, with a flavor of the kind of focused uh, simulation uh, uh, carried out in the, in the context of 5G Carmen, especially to support the techno-economic studies. And this is viewed as a complementary contribution to the more general deployment uh, studies that will be also accounted for at the end of this uh, webinar today. So um, to start with, um, let's say that the one strong motivation here is to assess the performance of the uh, V2X um, connectivity, uh, for instance, throughout uh, KPIs, uh, I mean, conventional ones like uh, reliability or latency. Uh, and mostly in light of uh, both network and MEC deployment considerations. So this is to fuel, let's say, the, the discussion at the techno-economic level. And for this sake, we, we then focus on an illustrative, let's say, uh, use case, so namely the um, centralized cooperative monitoring case, um, while uh, assuming the support, of course, from uh, V2S connectivity, so um, either V2N uh, over, uh, let's say, uh, 5GNR, so this will be the main focus of this uh, sample presentation today. But we also had uh, separate or let's say parallel work on V2I connectivity with respect to RSU typically. Uh, and this, this is something I will recall briefly at the end of my presentation. Last, last but not least, uh, we also um, somehow want to address scalability, at least to some extent, um, um, by considering different, uh, uh, let's say, road traffic conditions and also variable amount of active users. So this can be related at very first sight with the, let's say, uh, kind of penetration uh, rates of the technology, uh, assuming uh, connected vehicles. Um, okay, so here, here is the, um, the the use case of interest, so uh, namely the centralized cooperative lane change. So here you see uh, a red car that is uh, that intends to, to change the lane where two cars are already driving. So th the concept here is that there's a, centralized monitoring service that is supposed to issue recommendations to the three cars so that so as to create the gap and so that the red car can insert. And of course, as we, as I mentioned previously, this, this is supported by V2X connectivity, so namely V2N or V2I. Uh, in terms of message sequence, we assume CAMs uh, for so cooperative awareness uh, messages, uh, standard ones uh, for uplinks, uh, yeah, for the uplink, conveying a uh, status of the information from vehicles. So this shall also include, of course, the intention to change the lane from one of them as uh, the initiator of the posture. And then, uh, so the, in return, we assume also uh, Dems uh, message uh, over the downlink uh, from the MEC. Uh, so back to those uh, cars involved in the CLC posture. Um, here is a test environment, uh, which consists of uh, it's a portion of motorway uh, at the Brenner Pass, which is the, at the border between Italy and Austria, and the varying, uh, again, conditions in terms of uh, road traffic. And uh, this uh, here, we, it shall be mentioned that these uh, figures um, uh, result from uh, concrete data uh, collection on the field uh, as performed by the uh, road operator itself uh, at this border. 
And we also assume um, uh, some kind of gradual uh, uh, deployment, uh, so in, in uh, namely for the for the 5G and uh, a gradual number of, of G not Bs in, in the in, in the context. So typically we uh, rely on on existing uh, LTE sites on both sides of the uh, of the border, and we also add artificially one more end, let's say optimized sites in between to to possibly bridge the gap in terms of coverage. Uh, I won't bother you with the details in terms of uh, radio parameters, so on and so forth, but uh, just to maybe um, point out that uh, we also consider some kind of mixed data traffic model. So we have this uh, primary service, uh, namely the CLC, uh, involving only three cars uh, with those uh, count and dump messages that we have seen already. And besides, or in parallel, we consider also a secondary service. Uh, with a varying uh, amount of um, of uh, users uh, active in transmissions uh, with their own let's say, uh, stream of uh, uplink cams, uh, possibly to serve uh, to, to, to yeah to serve uh, other cam uh, services. Um, okay, so here is the kind of uh, let's say uh, result that we could achieve uh, in this case. So you see. Uh, as a function of the, the road traffic conditions. Uh, so one very first uh, trivial remark is that, of course, uh, uplink reliability decreases more rapidly uh, than that of the downlink as a function of the percentage of active users. Uh, uh, a second point is that uh, we observe, of course, also uh, some gains uh, while considering more and more gene of bees in, into, the, in, into the problem. Um, and at the end of the day, we uh, could see that under let's say, reasonably low traffic uh, conditions or, or, and or, uh, re, um, let's say, reasonable so a conservative percentage of active users uh, or penetration rates, if you want, uh, let's say, uh, so we could achieve uh, substantial uh, reliability figures uh, systematically in most of the settings. Um, we also, besides consider, so this was for link reliability, but we also uh, tackle um, uh, latency um, uh, points. So typically, we uh, are considering different MAC deployment assumptions. So, for instance, the decentralized, where we assume a, a one MAC collocated with the GNOB tower. Uh, we also assume clustered uh, versions, so it's like an intermediary uh, level uh, between decentralized and fully centralized, where the, the one MAC is uh, located with a data center of MNO, for instance. And of course, these assumptions come along with uh, certain assumptions also in terms of latency ingredients or components, uh, so that at the end of the day, we could came up, uh, come up with uh, this kind of uh, overall end-to-end -end budget analysis. So typically, this is an illustration for uplink messages. Uh, so besides the part that is simulated for the run, uh, so typically throughout uh, NS3 simulations, we had to make also educated guesses for the, let's say, higher le level um, uh, uh, segments of the architecture. So typically, uh, a backhole, a core network, internet switching, so on, so on, so forth. Um, so in a nutshell, so we could see that um, uh, the, the, the run latency was uh, more or less already uh, around 10 milliseconds. So this is more or less the baseline requirements. Uh, that's, of course, this latency tends to increase by a few milliseconds uh, under high traffic conditions. And uh, we could also observe that uh, in the end, this latency budget is, is, is uh, dominated by the, by the RAM latency, at least under this uh, evaluation setting. And we then we came up to the conclusion that the clustered MAC uh, option, uh, let's say deployment option, could, could be a good operating trade-off uh, uh, between uh, oral latency and, and deployment costs at the end of the day. Uh, but of course, we can also leverage on, on uh, 5G uh, features uh, to, uh, 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 let's say, improve even further the, those figures. So typically, this is a kind of uh, slicing, uh, so at least at the physical uh, level, so typically in terms of uh, uh, bandwidth partitioning of the radio resources, for instance, where we show that in the uplink, we could gain some, uh, let's say, uh, extra milliseconds in the budget. Uh, so it was fast, but it was again just to deliver you um, as a message that we, we, we had this kind of um, uh, simulation study to, to again to fuel the discussion of, uh, at the techno economic level. So we had some results in terms of latency reliability. Uh, just for you uh, also uh, information, we have also other complementary simulations ongoing currently in 5G Carmen, exploring the multi rad connectivity. So for instance, typically when we assume that the 5G co coverage could be, uh, let's say, spotty, and when we can uh, switch from, from one rad to, to the next to ensure, let's say, 
um, uh, higher level of uh, automation or, or resilience through uh, multi-channel redundancy. So this is under uh, evaluation uh, in parallel. Uh, so in terms of now of, of the results exploitable in the techno economic uh, studies uh, concretely, so typically we could uh, we, we had we seen um, that we had some kind of recommendation about the, the cluster make deployment option. We could also see that net network identification, uh, let's say in localized uh, cross-border areas could uh, contribute to, to boost reliability by bridging the, the coverage gaps. Um, and uh, besides, so so this was mostly in terms of V2N analysis, uh, so uh, based on 5G and all. Uh, besides, uh, as or already mentioned also, uh, so we had the site uh, contributions on V2I with respect to roadside units. Uh, again, why? assuming a, a gradual deployment of the of those uh, roadside units and assessing the performance so typically not only in terms of link reliability but going further in terms of service availability and here the so-called service availability uh, account for the successful uh, let's say uh, transmissions and reception of all the messages involved in the CLC pressure so prior to the execution of the pressure, the, the CLC itself in the in the this what we call uh, um, uh, negotiation phase and this uh, kind of uh, figures or, or results uh, as you see uh, later on in the in asthma's presentation will be exploited in the exploited in the techno economic uh, studies so uh, this is all from my side for today uh, i guess we can now um, end over to to asthma for the business and techno economic analysis thank you for your attention Oh, sorry, I was <laughs> muted. Uh, I said thank you very much, Benoit, that, uh, uh, for this uh, good good presentation of the solid background that uh, we use it in our techno-economic analysis. So in this part of the webinar, I will present the main outcomes of the business and the techno-economic analysis from uh, uh, perspective uh, for this uh, 5G Carmen uh, project. So next slide, please. So, but uh, to start, uh, let's get uh, familiar with the context of this project. So uh, we can all agree that the mobility corridors are a, a vital element in the European economy. And so the same applies for the cooperative connected and automated mobility CCAM services for the future of those mobility corridors. However, the provision of these CCAM services Face, uh, faces uh, many challenges. Uh, for example, the coexistence and combination of different radio access technology, like the, the two flavors of the short range communication, CV2X from the 5G networks and the CITSD5, also the different deployment strategies of the MNOs uh, in the border area. Uh, we have the major challenge of the discontinuity of the service in the cross border area due to the roaming. Uh, also, uh, what are uh, the, the, the supportive network architecture in order to uh, meet the, the, the defined KPIs of the different CCAM services and also what uh, kind of uh, trade-offs we can have in order to deploy the needed infrastructure uh, to support the CCAM services, but also in a cost-effective way such that the involved actors have a, a positive business case. All of these are in a multi-tenancy ecosystem where a lot of actors are involved, for example, road operators, mobile network operators, car and equipment vendors, regulator and uh, CCAM service providers, etc. So uh, we, uh, next slide please. So we defined uh, several research questions that we will tackle in our study in order to, um, to study uh, some of these uh, challenges. First of all, who are the involved actors in this CCAM ecosystem? Uh, and what are the key uh, stakeholders in this ecosystem? What are the sustainable business models for those key stakeholders? And what is the total cost of ownership of deploying different uh, and possible deployment scenario? Well, this is depending on the user technology for, 
for example, 5G networks or the short range communications CV2X in order to support the provisioning of CCAM services. And uh, finally, what is the impact of the new technology coming with 5G networks, for example, the multi access uh, edge computing and network slicing on the business case. So in order to tackle those questions, we define this methodology uh, that consists of four uh, main parts. We start with, um, first of all, understanding the value network on and the business models, identifying the key stakeholders in the ecosystem and uh, uh, identifying the, 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 the interaction between these key stakeholders in order to know what are uh, the possible and potential business models. Uh, after that, we, we did the viability study where we defined a total cost of ownership model to study the cost of the different deployment scenarios based on different technologies. Uh, and uh, to also evaluate the, the, the business case, finally, we identified some revenue assumptions that we will present as well. And uh, in order to get to uh, a, a positive business case, we have to take some trade-offs between cost and benefit. And one of the innovations we did uh, within 5G Carmen was to study the impact of new technologies on this business case. For example, the study, the cost of uh, the MEC placement within the network topology in order to, to study the resulting uh, total cost of ownership and also using network uh, slicing technology to enable new and innovative business models. Uh, since we have a lot of uncertainty about the cost data, uh, uh, use it in, in the different um, in the TCO model, we run a sensitivity analysis to, uh, to assess the degree of this uncertainty of input and its impact on the, the results of the model. So uh, we will start with the first part of the methodology, the value network on, and the business models. So uh, as we see on the left hand side of the screen, we see the 5G uh, Carmen ecosystem. I called 5G Carmen because we use the 5G Carmen uh, generated knowledge, the technical solutions pro, uh, um, suggested by 5G Carmen projects in order to enable the seamless uh, continuity of the service in the cross border. This platform, for example, uh, presented in uh, uh, the previous webinars uh, by 5G Carmen, where we see that we need to, to have uh, orchestration between the different MNOs levels to, uh, to enable the seamless connectivity. So the MNOs are a key actors here providing the, the, the mobile network uh, connectivity, the short, uh, the long range connectivity. We need also, as you see in R10, uh, uh, R10, yes, the R10, you see the interaction between the MNOs uh, on uh, the both sides of the, the, the border in order to coordinate uh, to an, uh, activate certain interfaces in order to communicate between them. The, the MNOs and the road operators provide connectivity to CCAM service providers. Uh, and uh, finally, he will provide the CCAM service uh, services to the end user. So also we have, uh, we need interaction between uh, 5G Carmen uh, solution and uh, the regulation and policy makers because they will um, give uh, some advices on what we need to change in the current uh, telecommunication regulation in order to uh, ensure the seamless uh, continuity of the CCAM service in the border area. For example, the maximum allowed uh, signal power of the base station next to the border and other examples maybe. And um, for the standardization part, the, this generated the new knowledge within 5G Carmen will feed uh, the, 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 the process of standardization. It can be integrated there in order to make it easy for the, the equipment vendors and MNO to adapt this uh, uh, new uh, technology. So for the business models part, we focused on the, on the side of the MNOs. As I said, the bottleneck is the, the, the connectivity there. So, but we need uh, first to understand uh, what we can have as business model in function of the technology in the field. So if we have uh, in short term 
uh, we have uh, the 5G non-standalone, so we don't have, for for example, network slicing, and we have a different deployment strategy but by, by MNOs. So what we can have as a business model is a cooperation model or coordination model where MNOs needs to uh, activate certain interface between uh, them, uh, like enter MEC interfaces in order to guarantee a seamless connectivity. This comes with the management level agreements that they need to sign beforehand in order to prepare for uh, providing connectivity to, to support CCAM services. For the long term vision, we will have 5G standalone and then network slicing is an option there to use and to end network slicing. We can have a, 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 a collaborative business model where MNOs uh, establish an agreement to uh, define a customized end-to-end -end slice that cover the whole corridor to support the provision of uh, CCAM services. Another option can be slice as a service business model where um, where the operators that want to provide connectivity on the corridors can lease uh, a CCAM slice from the other operators in order to uh, integrate them and finally provide connectivity to CCAM service providers or he can also be the, the, the final uh, service provider. And the non-collaborative model, which is a very costly and maybe a realistic model, where every one of uh, these MNOs uh, providing service in, in the, the border and the corridor will deploy the network along the corridor uh, part. Um, in all this business model, we can have a neutral host business models, uh, a, a neutral host who will um, deploy towers, passive equipment, make nodes, and then MNOs can lease it from, uh, from him, such they will decrease the deployment cost. Uh, so next slide, please. For the viability study, we, we uh, developed a generic cost model uh, in order to uh, study the total cost of ownership of deploying different deployment strategy and scenarios using first V2I uh, links with respect to PC5 mode 4 and then uh, uh, the different deployment scenario using V2N uh, links with respect to 5G networks. So first of all, the different 5G garment scenarios will feed the network design uh, model that uh, will uh, give certain uh, aspect to the, the dimensioning of the network together with the KPI analysis model that will analyze what are the requested uh, KPIs to fulfill to support these CCAM services uh, together with the existing infrastructure in the, the Brennero Pass, uh, the different uh, coverage of uh, inode Bs and uh, the roadside units, the traffic density, uh, all together feed the, dimen the network dimensioning model. Uh, that will generate the bill of materials uh, together with the cost data and the capex opex classification the capital expenditure and op operational expenditure will fit the cost model that will generate the total cost of ownership of the different deployment scenarios let's start with the v2i scenarios next slide please Okay, we define it a, a three uh, deployment scenario that based on the variation of the deployed uh, roadside units. We started with the baseline uh, scenario, which uh, corresponds to the uh, currently deployed issues in the Brenner Pass uh, segment of the corridor. We have two issues there. And then we said, okay, we will increase by two to have the dense V2I deployment scenario. Uh, so in total, we will have four uh, roadside units and the ultra dense uh, deployment scenario, we have in total eight issues. So in order to know, uh, in order to know uh, when we will uh, uh, adopt this deployment scenario, we said we need an idea about the penetration rate of the connected car the fleet penetration rates. So by the start of the project was not very clear uh, when we will have a good adoption of this technology. So we said we will start with a generic approach where we will compare the three deployment scenarios separately. And then we said, okay, ca we can move to an abstract approach where we have a stepwise deployment. We can uh, spread the total cost uh, of uh, ownership of the different deployment over time. So we can start with two issues, then after two years, move to four and then to eight, depending on the penetration rate. And we link it to the simulation results, the service availability KPIs. 
After that, what we did is to define from, we, we took from literature different uh, penetration rate scenarios ranging from pessimistic to optimistic, low, medium, and high, and we study what is required as a uh, cost of the investment in order to, su to support this um, the traffic coming uh, uh, from uh, the connected cars in each of these three scenarios. Next slide, please. So uh, here I only present the, 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 the results from the, the, the second approach. Uh, if you are interested in knowing more, I refer you to our uh, deliverables. But here, just to, to, to get an idea, uh, we compared the, the cost of these three deployment scenarios in, in, two, uh, in two use cases. The first one is pre-equipped field, like the Brenner Pass. We have fiber cable there, we have electricity, etc. And a green field where we don't have uh, any infrastructure yet. So this is to generate more uh, insights into if we want to uh, mimic this deployment in another segment of the corridor, what is the, the generated cost? And as is expected, the higher the number of simultaneous connected cars, the higher the TCO required to support uh, the traffic com coming from them and uh, to fulfill the service availability KPI. What we also saw that um, the cost of deploying in a green field is three times more expensive than in a pre-equipped field because the, the cost uh, uh, the cost of electricity facility electricity facility and uh, fiber is uh, is uh, a dominant cost in the model. So next slide, please. So now we will study the total cost of ownership of the deployment scenario with regards to 5G networks. Uh, we define it the baseline scenario as usual correspond to the physical deployment uh, existing in uh, the Brenner Pass, and we link it always to the simulation to see if this uh, infrastructure is sufficient to support the traffic coming from the connected cars. And we had uh, to add the MEC nodes because, as I said, is a technical the technical solution uh, developed in 5G CAM, and we will use MEC to, uh, to guarantee the, the seamless uh, service continuity. Uh, we said, okay, we have two options. We install the MEC next to the towers, the base station, or we install it in the data center. And we compare between the cost of these two options. And then we said, if the current infrastructure is not sufficient to support provisioning SIGCAM services, then we will add an additional base station. And we, all, we will also compare the two options of having MEC in data center or next to the tower. Next slide please so as you see in the in the top graph that we have the blue line is the baseline scenario with the mech at the tower is more expensive than uh, having the mech at the data center uh, and also we found that the difference in term of uh, of uh, capex, uh, it's less pronounced in the dense scenario because there, what we have is that the opex, uh, par, uh, the opex component of uh, the cost is uh, in the overhead also is more uh, dominant than the capex uh, part of uh, the deployment. This is mainly because we need to pay for the renting the site where we will add uh, the new base station. Next slide, please. And then we said, why have, why we only investigate the option of having the Mac next to the towers or in the data center? Uh, because we, we adopted the Mac solution to decrease in term of latency. And uh, it's a costly solution to have it next to each base station. We said we can have a Mac clustering models uh, to make a trade-off between cost and, uh, and latency. So we defined three models, the start topology with having MAC nodes in between the access, the aggregation site and the base station. And the second flavor of the start topology is to having MAC exactly at the aggregation site and the collapse start topology where we have the MAC hosted next to the one 
one of the G node Bs uh, within the same MEC cluster. And we study them from a cost perspective. Uh, since uh, the number of G node Bs within the same MEC cluster is not known, we use the, the, the assumption that uh, with a specific um, server, MEC server with a specific performance, he can support, it can support up to uh, 24 uh, 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 base station at the same time, the traffic coming from the base station at the same time. So we vary the number of uh, G node Bs per MEC cluster from 4 to 24, and we uh, study the, the resulting number of MECs to cover all the uh, Bologna Munich uh, corridor. Um, and then uh, we compare the cost of the three models. Uh, let's go to the next slide, please. Uh, what we did also that we uh, saw that uh, the, the, the cost of fiber is a dominant cost. And we said, why not adopt the, some of the business models where we can uh, share infrastructure? So we know from literature that passive infrastructure sharing can save up to 35% from the capex and uh, of, uh, between 16 to 35 percent on the OPEX, and the active infrastructure sharing can save up to uh, 33 to 35 on the capex and 25 to 33 percent on the app uh, on the OPEX side. And it was found that all these clustering models are less costly than the generic non-clustering topology, uh, and several actors factors determine this. Uh, is the availability of uh, availability of fiber, availability of uh, a site, uh, enough space to, to, to host uh, the MEC node, and also the, the presence of direct link between the aggregation site and the, uh, the base station. The, in the worst case scenario, no, frust, no infrastructure in the field, we found that the first model, uh, uh, M11, which is here the blue one, it's uh, it's the, the the cost more cost effective one if we dis, if we take the, the 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 possibility of active and passive sharing, and then it's better the the collapse start topology uh, if we have active and passive uh, the possibility of of sharing the infrastructure, and uh, in the best uh, case scenario we have some infrastructure there. It's the the the. The second, uh, the second model, which is hosting the MEC next to the aggregation site, is the more cost-effective one. So let's go to the next slide, please. OK. So after having generating the total cost of ownership, uh, we fixed some revenue assumptions in order to, uh, to study the viability of the business case. Uh, and we define it for a revenue model. The first one assumes that we have uh, 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 0 0.5 euro per user for each use of the highway, a highway segment, which is length of uh, 100 kilometer. And the second one, we assume that drivers uh, of the car uh, supporting the V2X connectivity would pay a yearly subscription of two, uh, 250 euros. And uh, in the revenue model three, Sorry, we assume that the uh, we can collect a 0 0.5 euro per use of the only the Brenner Pass, and we can uh, include it in the toll fees and in revenue for uh, the revenue model four. We uh, use it a cost basing pricing uh, from uh, starting from the total cost of ownership, generating. Uh, uh, average cost per using, adding a profit margin to have an average revenue per user. And we saw that uh, the penetration of CV2X in, pass in passenger cars is highly determinative, determinative for the viability of the business case. If we have a high uh, penetration rate, then we have a positive business case. And we saw that the revenue model one and two are not viable, even with the high penetration rate. And uh, as a conclusion, we also saw that uh, the incorporating the roadside infrastructure and connectivity in the total fees seems to be a feasible option and a viable option as well. So next slide, please. As a major conclusion of the techno-economic analysis in terms of business model, we saw that a close collaboration is required between the involved actors, namely MNOs and road operators, to guarantee a seamless connectivity in the cross-border 
environment. New 5G technologies such as MAC and network slicing can enable new innovative business models. In terms of V2I deployments, the higher the number of uh, connected cars, the higher the TCU of the required deployment to meet the defined KPIs of the CCAM services. And we also saw that a greenfield deployment is three times more expensive than uh, the pre-equipped field. And then uh, we, we would think of uh, sharing infrastructure, even if in passive or active sharing can uh, can save a lot on, on the cost of the deployment. In terms of V2N deployments, the MEC placement at the data center was found to be more cost effective. However, if we want to have a trade-off between um, MEC cost and uh, latency, uh, we will uh, adapt one of the, the, the MEC clustering models. In terms of MEC clustering, it was found that MEC clustering, uh, as I said, is less costly. And um, with uh, the presence of some infrastructure like fiber uh, can also save on the cost. Next slide, please. In terms of cost allocation, the road infrastructure costs are borne by the respective road authorities, while the network infrastructure inv investment are also borne by the mobile network operators. And as I said, important cost saving can be realized by uh, having uh, making use of passive or active network sharing for both uh, the road authority leasing capacity or the MNO investing in it. In terms of viability of the business case, First, the penetration of the connected cars is highly uh, determinative for the viability of the business case, and uh, as it's the, 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 the as it's defined the, the revenue part of the business case. In terms of revenue, the model with uh, the first model and second model are not viable, uh, and the, uh, the the fourth model, the cost-based model, is viable. Uh, the viable uh, revenue models. So uh, thank you very much for uh, for attending this webinar. Uh, any questions, I will uh, reply to them in the Q&A session. Hi, good morning. Okay. Hi, good morning. I hope you can see my screen. Okay. Uh, now I am going to uh, outline the main results of the SDA study by 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 G. Carmen. Sorry, a moment. Just a moment. Right. Okay. Uh, this uh, brief outline of my of my presentation the, will be an overview of the main goals of, of the SDA report study, the methodology and assumptions that we have made to deploy this this work. Then uh, the brief details about the evaluation of 5G radio network deployments. And then we will provide the key points about the technical economic analysis, analysis results. And then uh, a completion of the conclusion of the SDA. The SDA is motivated by the European Commission Strategic Deployment Agenda, uh, which is trying to, to answer the question of uh, how many investment in terms of funding for connected auto autonomous mobility in Europe is needed. This is not uh, just uh, a part of uh, the 5G government board. This, uh, this is uh, common to all cross-border projects. Uh, uh, there are SDA uh, study teams in also running in parallel, uh, and this potentially uh, covers all the automotive ecosystem. Uh, regarding the Fagi Carmen, the the main features of of our study is that it covers the the 2021 to 25 timeframe, 
Uh, this, of course, center of the Valle Carmen corridor, 600 six, uh, kilometers from Urbana to Munich. Uh, we assume uh, we we uh, we we find out uh, eight typical segments uh, with different characteristics, and of course the cross border uh, corridors in the in the in the border between countries, uh, rural, urban, uh, some with tunnels, with uh, rivers, mountains. Uh, each of them representative of, of, of a, a type of segment the, the project can find when deploying the, the V2X in the roads. So uh, in our study, we tried to meet the B2I, B2X services KPIs. Uh, we are following the visionary roadmap by FGA. Uh, there are two deploying options uh, considered, uh, B2I, uh, performed by a road infrastructure operator uh, and B2N by a mobile network operator. We are assuming the penetration of uh, services using B2I and B2N is the same. And we assume two uh, adoption models for the uh, B2X. One more optimistic, uh, assuming a, a healthy amount of, of success of B2X uh, by 2025, and another more conservative. Uh, one of the main features is that uh, we are going to assess the, the amount of funding or co-funding by part of the European Commission. In this case, uh, for example, it could be 60% uh, of the capex, could be a typical value. And the results we offer are in terms of uh, capital expenditure, op operational expenditure, total cost of ownership, revenue, profit, uh, the weight of the co-funding with respect to, to the profitability of the network, uh, with respect to the population we are serving, uh, and offering a general guidelines, takeaways, etc. Sorry. Uh, uh, this this fiber uh, summarizes our methodology and assumptions. We are uh, first uh, um, finding out eight typical corridor scenarios with particular uh, aspects we are we we need to address in our uh, SDA. Uh, each of the corridors are modeled uh, from the OpenStreetMap uh, map, and then the the traffic mobility trace, traces uh, involving vehicles by using the the Sumo simulator to uh, simulate the the vehicles on the road, uh, and the 3D terrain model uh, to feed uh, an RSU and uh, 5G site placement uh, that is made in the the 5G Carmen uh, uh, UPV simulator and visualization pro platform, which is filled with uh, the target KPI values, which come from the FGA visionary roadmap, and then uh, we produce values uh, where the measured KPIs uh, must be assessed against the target KPIs. KPIs. If this is not uh, true, then uh, there is a process where we make a, a fine tuning uh, of the sites, the location, placement, etc. When this all the KPIs are being uh, fulfilled, then we have a deployment uh, with a number of sites. Uh, the combination about up, uh, five year upgrading sites and new deployment of 5G sites and this is assessed uh, for the economic analysis uh, with a cost uh, cost catalog uh, of pricing of of the deployment and capex of x and assuming adoption models and then we have the results of the study just to provide a brief overview of, of an example in segment one in caps time uh, in the Germany Austria border, uh, in a B2N deployment, we part from the terrain. Uh, we part from the existing base station and we find out whether upgrades and new deployments are needed. Uh, and these upgrades are uh, and deployments are progressive. In as seen in year 21, 2022, until 2025, where more and more. Uh, uh, sites are deployed in, in response to the uh, increasing adoption of V2X. 
and then we we aim at covering in the heat maps we have the same to nice nice heat map uh, but in other on other kpi we have the same uh, we aim at covering in red with higher values uh, all the part of the road Began the technological analysis, uh, the cost figures uh, for the capex, opex, the, the, the price of the base station, the price of the of the deployment of a site, the mech, the backhaul, etc., uh, come from diverse sources, mainly internal. Uh, for example, World Pack 6 partner IMEC uh, and solar external in the uh, come from the general literature on, on uh, current 5G rollouts. The adoption models motivate the intensity of the deployment force. So we are considering conservative and optimistic. And this means that for conservative uh, approach, uh, there is no there is no full de deployment of uh, 5G in the roads because it is expected to not succeed in 2025 yet. So this this more risk averse approach where we are deploying as we feel that the, the adoption is, is becoming and then the optimistic where we are sure uh, where, where we we experience uh, uh, the uh, healthy demand of uh, v2x service so we complete uh, and cover all the services in the 5 map until 2025. in parallel uh, mnos can tap the the possibility of accessing uh, Another complementary source of income, which is the general 5G uh, non B2X subscribers, and this depends on the of the amount of, of population or in even even that can be reached by your sites, and this considered also that the there is progressive general 5G adoption that can help for for example for menus. David, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, could you uh, complete your presentation in two minutes so that we can en uh, that we can en answer the questions okay. from the audience? Okay. Thank you. I can jump directly to the conclusions of our SDA. Uh, we have uh, shown that the we have uh, arrived to the conclusion that the adoption of V2X in 2025 uh, is one of the main aspects of uh, having a uh, a say in whether it's profitable or not. For optimistic adoption, we have the full deployments are profitable uh, between 500 or 1500 uh, euros per kilometer for uh, segments which are uncomplicated with no many complex factors. And for conservative adoption predictions, there is no clear return on, on, of investment. It has shown that the confounding by the European Commission is important. Uh, uh, whether 55% 55%, 60% is uh, the best approach is a matter for fire study, but this co-financing alone is not, not enough for assuring the economic success of B2X. So we need uh, to, to invent new, you know, novel and sustainable uh, in business models. Regarding profitability, profitability uh, between deployments high profitable even when uh, conservative adoption is considered. Uh, this is because there is a, a complementary source of income, which are the 5G premium subscribers you can serve. Uh, this doesn't mean that uh, segments with complex factors like bridges, tunnels, rivers are uh, profitable by per se because they need uh, an increasing intensity of deployment. Uh, regarding B2I conservative deployment, there is no, no profitable in, in the 2025 horizon. And, and there is a, this is a long-term uh, approach for the road infrastructure operator if he wants to, to make the, the deployment. Yeah, and the confidence cannot elevate this. Finally, uh, there are positive traits for uh, B2N and MNOs uh, because the upgrading of 5G, 3G, 4G infrastructure are, is already taken into account in some sense uh, maintenance considerations they, they use for uh, the upgrade. So this reduces the capex about 50% is considered in this case. And when serving non b 2 s 5G customers, you means that when, while you are waiting for the adoption of B2X, you can uh, start the, exploiting the, the network in, in from the economic point of view, in taking into account that uh, there is a sweet spot uh, below uh, 
10,000 uh, inhabitants where uh, the main source of your deployment will be the V2X. So uh, whether you are deployment, deploying V2X in areas with low pop population, you have to take into account that in the first years, uh, the the 5G non non V2X subscribers are not going to to compensate for your deployment. Thank uh, you very much. That's all. Yeah. Thank you, George. Uh, I will Thank hand over. Uh, I will stop uh, sharing my screen, and I think uh, uh, all the slides will be available, of course, online. And let's see if there are. Uh, any questions to be answered? There is one question by Sebastian Bertoni. Uh, are there uh, other reasons why hosting Mac next to the towers is not a good option except for the cost part? Uh, Asma, would you like to, to comment on this and answer this question? Yeah, George, thank you. Thank you, Sebastian. It's a very good question. Um, as you said, uh, in addition to being a costly solution, uh, we have two major uh, issues with having Mac next to each tower. First, security concern, because we need to uh, physically um, secure each of these Mac nodes. Uh, and uh, also on the software level, uh, prevent any uh, intrusion in this distributed model. Second, we adopted Mac uh, models to uh, reduce on latency. However, having Mac next to each uh, tower introduced an additional uh, latency due to the need to transfer uh, the, the rela uh, session-related data for each connected car to the next node. And with a high driving speed, this is, will be very fast. So we have a lot of switch between Mac nodes, and this induces uh, an extra latency. Thank you. I hope this replies to your question. Thank you, Asma, and thank you, Sebastian, for the for the question. Uh, I don't see any other question from the audience. As I mentioned, this uh, the slides will be also uh, available online later on the project's website. So we're going to send uh, uh, a mail with uh, uh, to let you know when they uh, they're available online. Uh, I don't see any other question from the uh, audience. So I think we can close and I would like to uh, thank you uh, uh, for, uh, for your uh, participation today uh, and for joining this webinar and also I would like to uh, thank of course the uh, presenters uh, for the uh, making uh, this, I think you found it uh, useful and interesting as I found uh, these presentations. And uh, we will let you know when these slides uh, will be available on the project's website. So uh, thank you, Asma. Thank you, Benoit. And thank you, David, for your contribution uh, today. So uh, uh, and we wish you, uh, you and all the audience uh, uh, and uh, having a, a nice uh, weekend. Thank you very much. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.